Uh, so Zach and Leo, you guys have been with Cobra Kai from the beginning, correct? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. were you guys Karate Kid fans to start with uh, before, you know, you got the, got the offer to take on the gig or was it something, you know, you guys just like kind of came into it, like, Oh yeah. Karate Kid. What that, that was that old movie? I'd say it was like somewhere in between, but more towards the fan um, column. Like, Zach and I are 90s kids more than we are 80s kids. So like our karate kid growing up experience was less like seeing it in the theaters and like, sure. you know, crushing on Billy and Ralph and more uh, <laughs> like watching it in our friend's basement at every single sleepover from ages like eight to 15. Cause it was just like one of those movies that's always on TV. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, I think we've both probably seen it like dozens and dozens of times. Um, but it wasn't like the like the formative coming of age movie for us. Sure. Uh, so but when you guys got the gig, you guys knew like, OK, Cobra Kai, this is tying into Karate Kid. So you guys were aware of kind of the legacy that was coming with this show once it once it was offered to you. Totally, definitely, definitely. totally. And yeah. we had we had a really in-depth meeting before we got the gig with the showrunners, John, Josh, and Hayden. And they had sent us the script to the very first episode um, beforehand. And it was like, it was such a surreal experience reading that script because frankly, we didn't really, when we like got the meeting and like, you know, had, had sent a reel out and we're kind of like early talking about the project, we weren't aware that it was what it was. Like, we weren't sure how the the show was taking form whether it was a reboot whether it was a retelling of the same story right. um or or an alternate telling of the same story with all new characters um so then when we when we opened the script i remember zach and i like literally called each other and we were like wait this this freaking rocks like <laughs> this is unbelievable like two pages in we were both on that page and and but you know there was just a lot of like I would say common joy in this meeting we had with John, Josh and Hayden. And they just kind of launched us into the creative realm. Awesome. Uh, so the karate kid uh, itself uh, has a, it's a very rousing, memorable score from the legendary Bill Conti. Uh, and there are strong callbacks uh, throughout that, that, or that from that score throughout the series. So what is it like for you guys as composers to revisit that score and to kind of continue the legacy of that work, um, we definitely know that it's a uh, it's like a very beloved score and very memorable, and it was very special to the showrunners and it's very special to the actors too who were a part of it. And uh, I think the best, the smartest thing that I think the showrunners decided on was that we were going to have our whole kind of new Cobra Kai sound, and then they would be really selective in the moments of when to like employ Conti. And like, for example, when Daniel in the first season puts on the gi for the first time with the headband, like bringing, bringing moment of truth in there and having like the Conti come in like full blast, like that's, that's a very emotional moment. And they're really good at like pinpointing those moments and saying we should use the Conti there. And I feel like as we've actually gone further, like just through the seasons, we've actually been uh, Leo and I have really been able to to do more with our sound worlds, which we're really excited about. And it really does feel a lot like Conti handing us the torch, even though we've never met him. Um, but <laughs> it is uh, it really feels like we've been able to like just create this playground and we have our homages to the original score. But at this point, four seasons in, like we really are thrilled with with this with the kind of musical identity that we've been allowed to create i feel like when it's used in the show whenever the conti music is used it really is it feels like it punctuates because it's not persistent throughout the show so it really does feel like the impact is that much bigger is that something that is discussed i mean it, you know as you said you use it selectively but is that yeah they often will like write that into the script and one thing that i think really helps kind of with the nostalgia feeling is actually I would say like nine times out of 10, whenever there's Conti in the show, it's actually the original recording from the movie, oh, which really? just has like a very kind of special sonic, like comfort and identity that I think like makes those moments hit extra hard. Yeah. There were a few times where Zach and I will incorporate like a, a Conti theme 
Um, or because of like the logistics of a certain scene, we will kind of need to recreate and re-record a, a piece of Conti, which will generally just like take down by ear and kind of re slightly reinterpret. But um, uh, but for the most part, those those moments are are actually like the original audio from those movies. Okay, cool. which is super cool. I like yeah I yeah it so so mm -hmm. great that way. Um, which kind of like then also allows the the score that is unique to Cobra Kai to to then like kind of have a, a sonic separation as well, which I think is cool. So, I mean, the show balances drama, comedy, action throughout each season, uh, which is, I mean, it's no easy feat. Um, is that a discussion that's had with the music in terms of striking a tonal balance throughout, like never leaning too far into one aspect or another, which, you know, it's kind yeah. of very meta karate kid in that way is like to find that balance right is that is it's that a funny it's, it's definitely daniel we, larusso's uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've totally it's funny i think we would agree with what i'm about to say but like yes the answer is yes we are trying to always have that balance but we have found that um the scope of the show just keeps getting bigger and bigger and every time we write something that we're like this is just too big for <laughs> this like strip mall in Reseda, it works <laughs> so we have and we're always waiting for like John Josh and Hayden to be like can you guys like take it back just a notch and they never do <laughs> so we 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 have found that really like this story is so massive in scope even though it's just like taking place in the San Fernando Valley that uh we can't go big enough and that also allows I think it it definitely adds the drama for sure. It adds the action, but it also adds the comedy too, because from what I just said, like the absurdity of, of the juxtaposition of how big the music is to, to maybe on paper, how small the story is, but we all know that the story isn't small and it's, it's a, you know, generation spanning epic. So <laughs> we, we can't go big enough and we're always kind of pushing and we're excited for people to see season four because we still even can't believe that like we get to go as big as we get. To go. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of going big, um, I want you guys to tell me about the track. It's karate time. So it has a unique, it, I, I listened to it a couple of times uh, so far and I've seen all of season four. Uh, so it has, mm. has this unique blend of guitar and synth and thematic elements. So you're talking about going big. Uh, and it, what it made me think of was score ballad is kind of like the term that like stuck in my head after listening to mm. it. So I'm curious, like, you know, how did that, how did you guys come to this, this track in particular and how does that play into season four for you? We like to throw around the word overture when we talk about this track, um, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I think is appropriate for its sort of grandiose quality, but grandiose within like the Cobra Kai sound. Um, the score is like so thematic and every season becomes more so. And, and this track has a new theme that is introduced that, that fans of the scores for the first three seasons aren't going to recognize when they hear it. Um, and, and we just kind of wrote this track as like a love letter to all of our various themes and like tying them together in just this one churning, rocking, like prog rocking, like journey that, that sort of like takes us through all of our sounds, but also ties them together. It, it, I, it was really just a labor of love for like, Honestly, it's like the most fun. The, the like week that we devoted to this track is yeah. about like the most fun week of the last 52 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you guys in, you, you come into this as, you know, pseudo fans, not, you know, not died in the wool. I was at the theater originally, but you guys were fans. Do you find that working on the show makes you guys more of, of fans of the show itself? Or is it kind of- Oh like yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. we're obsessed. We're, we're, we don't. So we don't read the scripts. We don't watch the early cuts. We watch the. You know, we do what's called a spotting session. When we start on an episode, we sit down with John, Josh, and Hayden, and we watch the episode down, and then we decide where and what music to put. And a lot of people like to read the scripts before. Um, sometimes people ask us on the show, like, 
producers or, or something and like, hey, can you guys watch this episode before we spot it? Because we need some music. And we'll be like, no, we kind of want to just watch it. Like, we want to be surprised. I think John, Josh and Hayden like when they get to watch our reactions because we get really, re- I mean, I, I scream a couple of times, like, like people in my house are like, what are you, what are you screaming about? But we are such mega fans. And now, I mean, now mega fans. And I actually rewatched um, Karate Kid 3 as we were working on on season four and I was just my, like smiling the entire time. It makes it so much cooler to just pick up on all the Easter eggs that they're throwing down and just, you know, the fact that they've just like retconned like all of these the backstories with with Terry and Crease and it's like so, we are such fans of the show. We're so excited about it. We're about the new seasons too and everything. Like we're just like so excited about everything. So we know that uh, season five is basically wrapped at this point. Um, have you guys already started scoring for that? Or is that something that you guys are waiting to, to begin on? We are waiting to begin on it, but it is uh, knocking at the door. So we've, we've sort of done our, um, you know, like Zach was saying, we always try to get bigger and bigger and we don't necessarily know what form that will take this season, but we've been talking, tossing around some just sonic ideas and kind of getting the studios ready for whatever yeah. that is. We're still really recovering from the end of season four though, which we finished <laughs> in August. Like I, I'm seeing, like, we talk about season five as it like, we are, we, everyone has kind of been back in it. Cause as composers, we come in pretty much like as late as you can come in um, to it. Everyone shot it. Everyone's been, it's been edited, but like, we are really still just exhausted from <laughs> yeah. from the end of season four we uh, we should say though like we take our what we call the off season like pretty seriously in terms of <laughs> like we, like a lot of times we'll let like ideas for future seasons that we've like planted elsewhere just kind of like gestate and yeah uh, we like we actually like to play this score live we've done it a few times and and we're hoping that uh you know there will be some world opening up that lets us do it again in the in the near future so we're we're kind of always working on like these extended versions of some of the ideas in the show that, that we can then perform live and that usually teaches us a couple of things when we get to the next season that we can like incorporate freshly it, it, it's a pretty fun creative cycle oh nice so uh without obviously going into any spoilers and you guys say you don't read the script so you wouldn't have any spoilers for season five anyways but do you have do the showrunners meet with you guys and say hey this is kind of stuff we're doing, or this is a character we're bringing in, start thinking about doing this or pulling from that or whatever the case is that, is that a common tactic as well for, for the showrunners with you guys? Yeah, they usually, I feel like the last few seasons they've given us like a heads up call once or twice just to be like, Hey, this is going to be important. Like we know you haven't started watching yet, but like this is going to come up. So maybe start thinking right. about it in like a, right. they, they know we don't want spoilers but they'll you know, they'll, they'll <laughs> so instead they give us breadcrumbs so <laughs> right we we have to do our job at some point we have to like know, <laughs> we have to know. Like, but we but what for season four we knew we actually knew about what would become it's karate time very early on we knew that there was i don't want to say where karate time lands in the show but we knew that there was something coming and that we would have to write like an overture for it and um, and we obviously knew about about Terry and and some of the newer characters too that that are being introduced. So we had time to think about that. Uh, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, I I love Cobra Kai. I'm a huge fan. I'm I'm I grew up with the Karate Kid and all of that stuff. I'm it's it's uh, it's it's in my blood. It's in my DNA at this point. And I'm I love the show. You guys are doing great work. Um, I can't wait for. I really. I can't wait, just like you guys, I can't wait for everybody to see season four because it's amazing. And yeah, likewise. <laughs> yeah, gonna, we're, like, we're I really thrilled. think it's just going to like make people's brains explode. Oh, totally. <laughs> it's like, I, I always say the one thing that, that I always, I always feel this way after each season and I just hope and pray it just continues is I sit there and I'm just like, this show should not be this good. It should not be this good. This should not, there's no way, like there's so, such a great, tremendous balance of things that come together. I always just sit there like dumbfounded. Like this is seriously a show that's like pulling off miracles from season to season. So, and you guys are part of that. So that's awesome. Thank you. We like to think so. Thank you. <laughs>
All right. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate your time.